Okie dokie. <laughs> it is day one, week five of praying at 3 a.m. And today is called Jehovah Jireh, <laughs> which means to provide. Jehovah Jireh means to provide. And the highlighted verses for today, we get on just start praying, you guys. So I pray and we pray in the spirit for an hour together. And while I'm looking at these verses, he just start praying in the spirit and sending out uh, the video to people so that we can all pray together. So Genesis chapter 22, verses 13 through 14, and Jeremiah chapter 33, Basically, the whole chapter. I advise you to just read the whole chapter. But I'm going to start off with verses 10 to 11. Okay. So, Genesis chapter 22, verse 13 and 14. That's where we're going to start. But first, let's just get on and start praying together. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for your word, and I pray that you give us all your measure of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, discernment, and revelations. Father, just allow me or cause me to speak your words only and not my words. Holy Spirit, speak through me, speak your wisdom, speak your love, speak your knowledge over people. According to your word, for this week, day one, that you named Jehovah Jireh to provide, because God is our provider. So, Genesis 22, verse 13, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt sacrifice, for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And verse 14, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So, Abraham offered up his son Isaac to be the offering for the Lord. And in his obedience, at the very last minute, at the very last possible minute, right before Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, in obedience to the Lord, God provided a ram in the thicket. He provided the sacrifice. And so, that is why Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. The Lord provided him a different sacrifice other than his son. And this is a story about obedience. Obedience even when God is telling you to do something that seems crazy, that looks weird, that looks off. And 
people are questioning you people people aren't just questioning you they're telling you you're absolutely wrong you do not hear from god god would not tell you to do that god wants you to help you help yourself and maybe that weird thing that you're doing that thing that's not like you for, for you to do maybe that is the part where god is having you help yourself <laughs> you have to participate in the helping but it's not always going to look the same in every season and it's not going to always look the same for every person because we're all called to different measures of of word am i trying to say different measures of callings in our lives this the first day day one has already highlighted the importance of obedience are you being obedient to the lord like he has called you to do because obedience to him means that you love him you love him you don't you don't always have to under even understand why god is calling you to do something or and um, for, for how long? You don't always even need to know how long. Because I don't even know how long he's called me to be at my mom's house. But I'm trusting him every day, okay? And I trust that very, very soon, within a few weeks time, <laughs> I will be up out of here. <laughs> But by me being here, a plethora of amazing things has already unfolded. It has been amazing, okay? So, okay. I gotta give you guys this testimony. Keep praying in the spirit. I gotta give you this testimony. So, I've been praying and fasting, as you might know, for my family to be saved, set on fire for Jesus Christ, to be delivered. And what God did, what do you say? It was, maybe it was last week. Last week, the house, it was like high tension in the house because some people were arguing. And then I, I was like, God, man, I'm just going to stay up all night and pray. And then God was like, yeah, you are going to do that. I was like, oh. You're agreeing. <laughs> I, I just thought that he was just agreeing because he was just like, yeah, you need to be up all night praying. Little did I know he had something else in mind because at 12 a.m. I got up and I started anointing everything in the house. And then I, my, my sister came downstairs and I think we're going to do a testimony with her and I. And that, that should be really fun. But um, she came downstairs and we were just talking about, she was talking about her life at first. And then she started talking about how she was seeing these demons in her room and how she was seeing these, a demon in the downstairs bathroom. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's wild. Do you, you want me to pray for you? And then she was like, yeah. And as she kept speaking and she was trying to say the name Jesus. She was trying to so bad, but she couldn't say it. The, the demon that was inside her wasn't letting her say the name Jesus. And so I was like, okay, I gotta pray for you. And then she was like, yeah, pray for me. And she, she was scared, but I was like, no, we already got the victory. It's already finished. Just uh, allow God to uh, deliver you. He has not given us the spirit of fear. We have power, love, and a sound mind by way of the Holy Spirit. He gives us uh, courage. And um, I was praying for her, and it was just a very simple prayer. But it, you could see her just like reacting to the prayer. And the spirit of Leviathan came out of her. 
And then I thought, okay, maybe this is all we're going to do tonight. Maybe it's done right now. And the Holy Ghost was like, no. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're going to keep praying. And then she was like, I'm scared. And I was just like, Messiah, no, stop saying you're scared. Just, just trust God on this. Just trust him. Lean into him more. And I was praying for her, but it was like, she was distracted. I don't know if that was the demon or if it was her, but it just seemed like she was distracted. And I was like, you gotta focus, decide focus. And she was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna focus. And I started praying and I just said a simple prayer. And I was just like, Holy Ghost, you do the rest. And then, and then uh, all of a sudden, as, oh yeah, I stopped praying. I was just like, Holy Ghost, you do the rest. And then we were just having a normal conversation about stuff in the Bible. And um, she she just out of nowhere started screaming at the top of her lungs. She was just like, ah, ah. she was doing this. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, my mom is gonna come downstairs because my mom's not, my mom's not about that casting out demons life and barely about Jesus. That's why I need everybody saved, man. Because Jesus is, he's it. He's so fun and awesome. And if you don't have him, your life is going to be a circus. <laughs> okay. A hot circus. <laughs> Anyways, she started screaming, and my mom came downstairs, and long story short, the the demon was Jezebel inside of my sister, and she tried to, she, she was trying to choke mommy, my mom, and, um, uh, what happened? Oh, it was like, the, my little cousins and my little brother, they were, like, holding the side back, and... It was, it was difficult. I was even trying to hold her back. Man, she was coming at my mom strong. And she almost got her one time. And it was like, all right, mom, j just go upstairs. And then so, baby had to like sit on her. We had to push her down to the couch and sit on top of her. So that she couldn't get up and try to choke mommy any anymore. And then uh, she was saying, why she was upset she was like oh she hates me blah 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 and i was like all right mom you gotta come downstairs and I, and I got the okay from the holy ghost like yeah she needs to she needs to see this she needs to experience what's happening and she needs to hear what her daughter is saying and so i, I was like mom aside thinks you hate her can you just come downstairs and tell her that you love her because obviously my mom loves her Mom loves all her children, even when she gets frustrated, all right? She loves all of us, obviously, it's very obvious. But um, that unclean spirit was instigating. It was instigating a fight, and it was actually trying to cause one physically. And so my mom, when my mom came downstairs, she was... Talking to Asaya, saying, I love you. And as you can see Asaya was like, yes, I know this. I know this. But then you, you can also see like the switch. Like w when the demon was like, no, no, I, I hate her. I, it, was, it was so sick. Ugh. Demons, y'all need to stop playing with witchcraft and uh, just like, all sorts of demonic stuff, even if it's like white magic, it's still magic. You need to stop d dealing in that stuff because this is the result of it. A household in disarray. Okay. Uh, anywho, so the spirit in my little sister was, react was reacting to the spirit in my mom. It kept saying that out loud. It kept, it just kept saying it over and over again. 
the spirit of Jezebel was saying that about my mom. The spirit that was in my mom is in my mom. And so then we were all like, come out in Jesus' name. Everybody was doing it. Everybody. Just come out, come out in the name of Jesus. And then I, I, I felt the need to open the door. So he opened the front door. And as we were saying, come out, the front door just kept opening and shutting, opening and shutting, like something was leaving the house. And uh, like a few hours into the deliverance, this lasted like four or five hours, something like that. I think four hours, but a little, a few hours into the deliverance, it was like two hours or so, or three hours. The the kids, they they were like, they were like burping and hiccuping. But I didn't know that they were doing that. I just saw them like sit down for a second, but not all of them all at once. And, uh, sorry, <laughs> but, um, what happened? Later on, they told me that they were burping and hiccuping and they, they just felt like, yeah, they, they just felt like something weird was happening to them. And the Holy Ghost told me they was getting delivered. I was like, whoa, we weren't even praying for them. We were just praying for Isaiah only. <laughs> and God was delivering them, them all at the same time. That's wild. And then in the middle of that happening, I heard my little cousin start praying in tongues. <laughs> He's never prayed in tongues before. And I was like, whoa, have you prayed in tongues before? He's like, no, I've never done that. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's like, I, I think he said I heard it before, but I don't know what it is. And I'm like, oh yeah, he heard me doing it, but he didn't really know what it was. And I was like, wow, God was doing like a million miracles that night or that morning. <laughs> that was amazing, so amazing because. It started at 12 a.m., ended at like 4.30-ish, 5, and then the kids, they decided to finally go to bed at like 5.30. It was a long night. It was very amazing, but my obedience to the Lord, not going and getting a job, like the job that would actually take me back easily, I really because they love me so much. I didn't go back to them. I just stuck with the Lord telling me, nope, this is what you're doing. This is your job, don't do anything else. And not and getting evicted. And then up here was a blessing. Why? Because it's answered prayers for my family. That's why I needed to, th this is me helping my prayers be answered <laughs> this is so cool it's so amazing let's just keep praying you guys tell i mean if you've been praying so far this is week five if you've been praying the other four weeks you should leave a comment with what you've been experiencing in these four weeks so far of prayer at 3 a.m. and fasting every Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Just keep praying, you guys. What are you saying? What are you feeling, Holy Ghost? Because I was obedient. Because I have been obedient to him. And because I have stayed with him in the secret place. The Lord has answered my prayers. He, he's provided a ram in the thicket for my family. 
of deliverance. Not only just that, he, he made sure almost everyone that lives in the household experienced that one thing in which they've never experienced before. I don't even, I'm not even sure if they ever seen it. Except for, you know, like on movies where they do exorcisms. When the Catholic priests do exorcisms. I think that's the only time they've, they've ever seen deliverance. And that's amazing. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, God, for your miracles, for your wonderful, amazing, absolutely fantastic blessing. <laughs> Just pray passionately unto the Lord. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord is saying he is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. Remain obedient to what he has called you to do. Even if it seems like there's no way what he said was going to happen can happen. It just doesn't look like it. It, it just doesn't, it just doesn't seem like it's even possible. It's not possible for us, but it is possible always for him. I have an audience right now that he's not listening, really. I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> just a little bit, I don't like that. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Specifically, what this week is about, what it is called is, your marriage has come. So, a lot of us are expecting spouses, a husband or a wife or you're expecting for your marriage to get better or you're expecting to be able you're expecting from God to give you a miracle of children but it's coming it's coming just hold fast and keep on being obedient to what the Lord has told you to do no matter how big or small it is just keep believing him because without faith 
it is impossible to please him. We want to please him every day with our faith in him because our faith in him means that we trust him. Through any and every situation, it shows that we trust that what he's told us is going to come to pass and that we trust that he, he holds his word above his name. He holds his word above his name. Your marriage has come. It's come, it's here. So be on the lookout because you might not even know any person that you're interested in or just like not even around new people, but it's going to come. It's going to be a miracle. That's the kind of miracle that I'm waiting for. <laughs> okay, so that's why he highlighted Jeremiah 33, the whole chapter, basically, because the chapter is about restoration promised. That's the title of the chapter, so read the whole chapter, but what sticks out to me is I'm starting at verse 8 actually so Jeremiah 33 verse 8 and we read till verse 11 what are you saying? what are you feeling? holy spirit <laughs> excuse me uh, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Earlier, in this, in, I think it was last month, we were praying for God to have mercy upon all of the iniquity, for his mercy, for his blood to be upon all of the iniquity of us, our within our bloodlines, our entire families that, that are alive today, and through every channel in which our bloodline goes, goes back, all the way up until Adam and Eve, okay? That's what we prayed, and so, reading this, when it comes to marriage, it is necessary. It's necessary for iniquity to be forgiven, to be washed away, to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. It is in order for there to be restoration of the prop of what God has promised us. So iniquity is perverseness, is depravity, is is mischief is evil it's sin but it's not just sin it's like built up sin over generation and generation and so and so God is saying that he will cleanse us of all of our iniquity, of all of the iniquity that has been in our bloodlines as well, because that's what we pray for. <laughs> and because he has done that, in verse 9, it says, And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that 
that I procure unto it. So this means that obviously God's not getting rid of or cleansing our iniquity uh, in our lives and in our bloodline um, for our sake. Just like in uh, Psalm 23 says, I will restore your soul. Hmm. Look at that. Psalm 23. But he's doing it for his name's sake, not for our name's sake. See, but he restores my soul. He leadeth me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Because he doesn't have a blot or blemish on his name. So if we're going to be called by his name, if we're going to be his children, then that means our names need to be spotless as well. And so he cleanses our iniquity because he's merciful and grace and, and, and gracious upon us to even keep us alive. He's, he's cleansing us for the sake of his name. For the sake of his name that is purity, that is sinless, that is blemishless, <laughs> blemish free, <laughs> that's spotless, okay, he is perfect, and that is why he, he does it, okay, and of course, if we're going to be in his presence, right, we need to be holy, so cleansing us, setting us apart, makes us holy we have the holy spirit who is our righteousness therefore when we obey him we walk in holiness to obey him is to love him and so therefore we're obeying him our, our obedience is showing him that we love him and the fact that he's cleansing us is showing that he loves us okay cleansing us for his name's sake, not just that, but because he loves us and because um, obviously he created us to have relationship with him. And so we can't have relationship with him from afar off. We have, we have relationship with a person uh, whom we spend a lot of time with and we can't be in his presence or we can't be as close to him as we would like if we are still living in the world so anyone still living in sin okay i pray that the holy ghost conviction comes upon you right now and causes you to to repent and to come out of agreement renounce your uh divorce every evil soul tie every curse and covenant that they have may or may not know that you uh, are, are attached to okay and and to uh, tear down every evil altar in the name of jesus and to put a stop to every evil voice that is speaking over your life because of all the sin not just that you that you did but also in your bloodline because you don't know how what happened in your bloodline is affecting you today because each generation is an open door to the next generation that is how you have generational curses and covenants that carry on to the next one and to the next one and it's very obvious in the bible about uh generational curses you know how jacob cursed the land um cursed jericho about b building their walls of jericho again and whoever did it would be cursed like their son would be cursed if like you lose, lose their son or something and um that's exactly that's exactly what happened i forget but it was like a few hundred years later somebody built on that land and they were cursed by that curse that he spoke out of his mouth and so in order to break the curse all you got to do is do it with their mouth in the name of Jesus, get it in. Shut up, 
Let's just take some time right now to just break some curses, okay? Break some curses, break some covenants. Holy Ghost, lead the way. I had a paper with like a long list of things to come out of agreement with. Oops, sorry. I didn't turn my other light on, but I ain't gonna do that. Anyways, I did. The Holy Ghost lead the way. You know, every single last one that you're gonna speak on. So I just pray that we don't miss any of them. Speak through me in Jesus' name. So, Father, we we cover ourselves, our family, and our bloodlines all the way back until Adam and Eve in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we come out of agreement. We renounce. We, we break every we, we divorced every curse and covenant every evil altar every horn every 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 throne and every evil voice get it is speaking against our life in in our family's lives get it um, and our future children's lives and our future family's lives in general, in Jesus' name, because uh, you don't know just how far each curse and covenant is, is, you don't know exactly what each person promised, just in case they were into witchcraft and they were like promising certain, or like leveraging certain things uh, specifically, you just don't know how far, how many generations they went out any of that so we're breaking it totally and completely right now in the name of jesus uh every all of that when it comes to uh every every sort of witchcraft voodoo obey uh hoodoo Manipulation, uh, using crystals, uh, any spirit, curse, altar, evil voice of anything to do with witchcraft, with, with magic, in Jesus' name, with tarot cards, with with sprinkling of the dust, with all necromancy, what else, Holy Spirit, necromancy, uh, making covenants with dead relatives in your dreams. Okay, that's that's not them. That's not them. You gotta stop doing that. What else will you go? Uh, abortion. If you support it, if you supported the abortion, if if you um. Even if you contemplate it, do it. That's an open door right there. We break it in the name of Jesus. What else? Getting it, supporting it, dwelling on it. Um, taking someone to do it. Knowingly or unknowingly. Like, is it? If you were a taxi driver or something, we covering everything, okay? 
Fornication, adultery, masturbation, pornography. Being part of the alphabet community, we break all of the spirits in the alphabet community. Uh, Lesbianism, gay, whatever else there is. Too many letters. We break every spirit of confusion. We cancel out all, every, all the pixie dust that was sprinkled in your cup in order to confuse you on the things of life, okay? Break every curse and covenant that has to do with drugs, alcohol, marijuana, Every, every Break every curse and covenant, every altar, every evil voice <coughs> Excuse me uh, Concerning Marine spirits Mermaid, Dagon spirits uh, Whether it's male or female uh, or, And um Octopus spirits any bird like spirit, uh, any monkey like spirit, orangutan, get a shut little gorilla, which is representative of the spirit of rage, get it every spirit of murder, get it every curse and covenant that has to do with murder, whether you participated in it or whether you. Just have those thoughts because maybe you didn't do anything, but it came in generationally. You don't have to always, you don't have to do the sin in order for it to come in generationally. It will just be there. Why? Because there's already an open door to it. Every spirit of fear. We break every curse and covenant with every spirit of fear. That came in by way of... Um, being afraid of the things that are underneath your bed when you're younger, scary movies, horror. Break of curse and covenant has to do with the spirit of horror and the name of Jesus. Every, every throne that is under the sea, that is above the sea, that is in the woods, and also every curse and covenant that has to do with some, with going after some sort of treasure. I'm seeing like the treasure chest, any sort, any sort of uh, treasure under the sea. Any bloodshed because of it. Every throne that is above the earth uh, that was any oath made with a with a principality and power that is above the earth. Above the firmament. is broken in the name of Jesus. Every every blood oath that you made, break it right now in the name of Jesus. If you made it when you were a child, if you made it secretly as an adult, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel, than the blood of, uh, oh yeah, doing witchcraft with uh, your menstrual cycle in order to 
get someone to love you we break that curse in the name of jesus the blood of jesus is over it and it's rendered null and void right now it is blotted out in jesus name ask christ to forgive us for doing that i didn't do that i'm just praying along with y'all Break every curse and covenant with the spirit of Delilah, Jezebel, witchcraft, um, Ahab, lying, deception, of, of, of lethargy, always feeling tired all the time, no matter what you do, no matter what, how you eat, how you exercise, no matter what, break it right now in the name of Jesus. All right, and now that is broken. Every single unclean spirit that was named, every curse, every covenant. Oh, also break every curse and covenant made with uh, every disease, every sickness, including cancer, lymphomas. Um, I think it's okay. <laughs> cancer. Um, every every sort of cancer. Um, asthma. Any. Blood related illness. Pray that the blood of Jesus flows through your veins right now in the name, in the name of Jesus. Pray that uh, every, everything dealing with, it, with an illness or sickness or broken bone or anything in the bones, just pray for it to be lit on fire. In the name of Jesus, by Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, that that cures all diseases, Holy Ghost fire, that puts together anything that's been damaged, like it was made new, it did it it better than it was before. In Jesus' mighty name, and yes, every unclean spirit comes up and out at the root. In the name of Jesus, by the root. Uh, no tendrils left behind. Every seed is uprooted in Jesus' name and is cast into the judgment fire of the living God in the name of Jesus. And Holy Ghost, just come in with your water, with your fire, and just restore everything uh, as if we have never transgressed against you in the name of Jesus. Restore everything. Uh, make it better than new in Jesus' mighty name. It is restore our life, every consequence of what we have done, uh, of every evil that we have partaken in. Um, just pray that that you're restored. We can restore everything. I cannot think of words. Uh. Just for everything <sighs> in Jesus' name. Okay. Yes. Moving on to verse 10 and 11. Thus saith the Lord, Again there shall be heard in this place. Now Dalai, again shall there be shall it there be heard in this place which ye shall be which ye say shall be desolate without man without beast even in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast the voice of joy the voice of gladness the voice of the bride the voice of the bridegroom the voice of them that shall say praise the lord of hosts for the lord is good and his mercies endure forever his mercies endure forever and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. 
So he is restoring everything. He is restoring joy. The joy of the Lord. He is restoring gladness. And then he's restoring also marriage. He's restoring the bridegroom and the bride. And he's restoring our relationship with him. But also he is providing. The Lord will provide. That is his name. That is the name of this day. Uh, because he wanted it to be called Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. He is providing the bride. He is providing the bridegroom. He is providing your means of joy. He is providing your means of gladness. Oh my goodness. <sighs> my brother is snoring. Okay. Mm. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. He has provided all things good. He has provided mercy that that endures forever. Endure means remain in existence. It is to remain in existence forever. <laughs> what do you promise? He is good and that is mercy. His mercy. His mercy endures forever. Which means his kindness, his faithfulness, okay? His loving kindness. His favor, his reproof, his beauty, okay? All of the good things of the Lord. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. Hey, what are you saying? What are you feeling, Holy Spirit? Hey, Shandere. He has caused you to be no longer a reproach, no longer to be ashamed and ashamed. No longer will you be embarrassed. Okay. God, what God is giving us is going to be great. It's going to cause people to be jealous, okay? So, be in prayer, have discernment, ask God for discernment and discerning of spirits and ask Him for that and wisdom of what to do in that situation uh, in order to avoid those people who act like they are happy for you, but really, they are jealous and they have ill intent towards you, okay? So, last week was definitely partly about asking God for discernment because we're really going to need it in this season. Christ, the end of the 
Spend the next two to three hours just, you know, continuing to repent of those things that you've been holding on to. Um, as the Holy Ghost convicts you or brings to your attention what needs to go or things that he wants you to start doing. And just be obedient, okay? Be obedient because with your obedience, God will provide. God will provide everything that he is promising. And this week is all about marriage. God says, his words, your marriage has come. So up next is that wedding ring, okay? I'm expecting it. Okay, it's been almost two years. I don't know how people do this. <laughs> Seriously. Anywho, it's time to get married. <laughs> You're snoring. Just spend time with him in the secret place. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to be like. <laughs> you can just be chill with him sometimes. You don't always have to speak so loudly. Sometimes. He will, he will move you or quicken you to just pray harder. And then other times you don't need to do that. <laughs> you don't always need to do that. You can just chill with the Lord. <laughs> just be with him. Oh, <laughs> Rush <laughs> My throat is itching. The voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride. I'm very excited for this. <laughs> The voice of the bride, the voice of the bridegroom is what he is restoring okay which is important because it is with our voices it is with the words that proceed from our mouths that break curses that uh call upon God for mercy, for deliverance, for salvation, for victory, for welfare, for prosperity in the land. 
okay? It's what changes generations, okay? So our voices are so important. And that's what it says, the voice of joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? But also uh, the voice of gladness. So the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, when it comes to praising the Lord, we do that. We do that, um, we can do that with joy and with gladness. Um, you can also praise God in a state of, you know, being, feeling like sad and all that. But the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, you hear that in celebration. And that is what the Lord has been talking to us about. That this is the year that we celebrate. It's a year of celebration for us who are obedient to the Lord. Okay? And so, don't hold back your joy and your gladness in the Lord. You know, make a, a loud noise for the Lord. In your celebration to Him. Because He has, what, restored the voice of joy. Restored the voice of gladness. And very soon, we will have our husband, or if you're a man, you will have your wife. <laughs> it's a very exciting time, and if my, if, if the father did that level of miracle in my family, then he can make a person spring up out of nowhere. <laughs> Literally nowhere. The what works. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. You want to come up from the what works. But, <laughs> anywho, I'm done. <laughs> I have to go. Bye.